Yo 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 yo
It's, Absolutely. It's a lot. Uh, Mr. Nichols was uh, stopped. Uh, traffic violation. Alleged just reckless driving. Simple, small infraction, really. Uh, five officers were charged with his beating death. They kicked, they beat uh, this young brother to death. He died several days later in the hospital. And, of course, what's been so devastating for a lot in the culture, all five officers black That's right. we're seeing investigation though we, this is important to note of some tangential players here uh, medical MTs things like that that include some white people mm-hmm. so they're going to be investigated there are more charges to come so far all five officers have been dismissed from their police duties and charged with second degree murder what I love is you know when we talked about this story yesterday uh, Charlemagne you talked about uh, and you agreed it would be a good day to talk about the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act Miss mm-hmm. Nichols agreed let's mm-hmm. listen I just need <laughs> Whatever that George Floyd bill, we need it passed. Yeah. Yeah. We need to take some action because there should be no other child that should suffer the way my son and all the other parents here have lost their children. We need to get that bill passed. How important is it, Charlemagne, do you think that this woman took this moment in her deep grief to make that call to action? I think it's very important, but uh, I don't think it's going to change anything. You know what really? I mean? Because it's not going to make any of those politicians move to want to pass that bill. Because if, if, it, if, it, if, it, if it did, if a, if a mother's tears mm-hmm. is what moved people to pass that bill, that bill would have been passed a long what time ago. What was the important factors of the bills? Like, like, what is the important factors of that bill that will... Getting rid of qualified immunity. Mm-hmm. That's, that's one the of them. Main, that's another, the main one, right? Another one... Well, I think that's a huge one. I also think, though, Envy, there's a statute that talks about use of force because that's what we keep talking about. Mm-hmm. I was here with y'all about five years ago. We were talking about Stefan Clark and how there were no that's charges right. there. And it's because the op- opportunity for police to use deadly force is so wide open. Mm-hmm. And this bill, Envy, narrows that. It mm-hmm. brings it in. It mm-hmm. holds them to a higher standard. And that's important. Uh, speaking, though, Charlemagne, OK, you say. Is it going to move the, the politicians? Because that's really where the movement needs to be. Let's listen to our Vice President Kamala Harris. This violent act was not in pursuit of public safety. It was not in the interest of keeping the public safe because Tyree Nichols would be with us here today. Was he not also entitled to the right to be safe? So when we talk about public safety, let us understand what it means in its truest form. Tyree Nichols should have been safe. I think she's got to go even further to be candid and say, right? Well, and say, when we talk about public safety, we're talking about white safety. That's right. That's that's really the the, the thing that's not being said. It's like, when have black people ever been truly safe in our our black bodies? In this 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 white supremacist country? No. No. Let's be honest. It all sounds like car salesman stuff. Nothing ever changes. They say the same speeches, the same time. We need to do this. We need to do that. But when do we get to the point where we actually do it? She spoke on the George Floyd Police Night, too. She did, yeah. She did. Let's hear uh, As the United States Senator, a co-author of the original George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. And as Vice President of the United States, we demand that Congress pass the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. Joe Biden will sign it, and we should not delay, and we will not be denied. It is non-negotiable. What's missing for me is you got to name names. You, and you talked about names. this on um, when you had the vice president on your Comedy yeah. Central show. You got to say, uh, brother Tim uh, Scott in That's South right. Carolina, who claims that you also want to move forward on police reform. Come on to the table. Mm-hmm. You got to talk to Joe Manchin. Mm-hmm. You got to talk to the holdouts. Mm-hmm. You can't just have this generalized call to action, kind of like NBC saying. Now, now it's car salesman talk. That's unless right. you gonna name the names. That's, that's all. Name I'll the be names. Or what's the, what, what Monique say? Keep it on the school school ground. That's right. <laughs> and, and you know, even though we know uh, that was for the cameras because politicians never stop campaigning. Sure. I am happy that, you know, uh, Kamala and the brother's mother called for the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. You know, at least on, on Kamala's part, we know it was, you know, just for the cameras. Right. But mm. why does it have to be a reaction to another unjust murder? At the hands of the police, it shouldn't take another black person dying at the hands the of the pr- police for you to call the pressure legislation. Them. That's like, like the pressure on them. Like that's the why. legislation is literally named after a victim of police brutality. Whose family has changed since then. Was also there putting to another yes. black brother, Mr. Nichols, to rest. Uh, if we have time, can we hear from the Reverend Al Sharpton? We'll do it when we come back. Right? We'll we come back. When we come back. Okay. I, I, and one last question: Did they show up at anybody else's funeral? I, and see, that's what I was saying. That would too, make right? me feel funny if I'm George Floyd's family Yo. or any other mm-hmm. other victims' family. I would feel funny too. You come to this brother, which you should have, 
But you ain't because coming to nobody else's funeral? Because it's headline else's? news. Because it's headline news. You ain't news. coming to nobody else's funeral? And for me, it's great to you show up. You didn't care about nobody else? It's great to show up to that funeral. But to me, the optics are way more powerful when it's a woman of color, you know, at the funeral of a brother who's been killed by white officers. Mm-hmm. Then you can address the system of white supremacy and the corrupt right. police system at the same time. You know what I mean? I, just, I, I want the VP to talk about the George Floyd Policing Act more because, like she said, she is the co-author of that bill. Sure. And I would think that the co-author of that, co-author of that bill would talk about that bill all the time, not right. just as a reaction to another black person getting killed. And identify the holdouts that are making it not a reality. Well, we'll get to more of it uh, next hour as well. But right now, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. Again, 800-585-1051. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. You are nothing more than a man. I'm (laughs) (laughs) You could buy, man. I'm glad somebody finally realizing you Dominican. I'm not Dominican. Shout out to all the Dominicans we, out we there. We come in all shades, Sean. But I'm not Dominican. I'm, I'm really black. Don't listen I to him. I know you're oh, black. I'm white okay. Dominican. He's not him. Afro-Latino. Hello, who's this? Too far. Hey, how you doing? This is Tyree calling from the 804. Tyree, what up? 804. 804. What the hell is 804? That's Virginia? Richmond, Virginia. Yep. Oh. What's that? The Breakfast Club. Shout out to Charlemagne, DJ Envy. Who's the guest host? It's Miss Ebony K. Williams. Yes, indeed. How you doing, Miss Ebony K. Williams? Better now. How are you? Awesome. Awesome. Hey, look, I would like to get it off my chest that... C3 Car Club is the best car club in the whole United States. Okay. We've been putting it on for our cities, our chapters, for going on 11 years come February 12th. Well, congratulations to y'all, brother. Y'all need to pull up in one of my car shows, man. The closest one to you guys. Right. Charlotte, uh, New Jersey, uh, Atlanta, uh, what else? Texas, and Dallas. We have, oh, Houston, come we on. We have chapters in all of those cities. Go pull up. I'm gonna put you on hold. I'm gonna put you on hold. I want you guys to pull up. I give you a section, and y'all can display your cars. We'd love to have y'all. Love you. I'm gonna be on hold. Hey, quick shout out to my wife, Carmen. I love you, my kid, Cal, Ariana, and Camille. All right, brother. Hold on. Hello, who's this? This is Ashley calling from Houston. H Town. What up, Ashley? Ashley? What's going on, guys? I'm pissed off this morning. I'm sorry for for having this energy. It's all good. What's up? <laughs> Uh, so the five black officers who murdered Tyree Nichols was pissing me off besides the fact that they killed this brother and didn't consider that this could be their brother or cousin. Mm-hmm. It's all the conspiracy theories and rumors that are happening beyond the scenes. So I work at a FedEx facility and there's so many rumors going on about the the main reason why they killed this brother was because one of the cops, baby mama, he was messing with and all this this drama. Why can't it be just five black officers who corruptly killed this man? Why does it have to be all this behind the scenes of what he may have done to get no, killed? No, you're right, but that's because people not understanding something scares them, so people be trying to come to their own understanding about things so they feel better about the situation. It's also annoying, Ashley. It doesn't make it right. It does, it Ashley. You know what? It's not right, and that's why we have a day in court Absolutely. where people can actually get on a witness stand and we find out what happened for real. That's right. Okay, so it has not come out of what the motive was of why no. they did this. That's for trial. No. That's all rumors, Mama. No. And I think when people hear stuff like this, that. when people hear stories like this, they don't want it to happen to them. So they always got to... Make gotta, up a reason. That's right. Make up a make reason. Up a reason. Yeah. Like, right. oh, that's why that happened. Yeah, yeah. Right. Just so they uh, don't have the anxiety of it happening to them. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's a new day. This is your time to get it off your chest. Wake up. Wake up. Whether you're mad or blessed. It's time to get up and get something. Call up now. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello. Who's this? Hey, how you doing? Good morning. Hakeem. Hakeem, good morning. Get it off your chest. Uh, I just wanted to give a shout out to my mother. That's possible today's her birthday. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Shout out. Hey, my hey, modest. Uh, my name is Kathy. 55 years old today. I'll let you know I love you. I appreciate you. You raised uh, a good man. I hope to wish you many more birthdays. Hey, Happy birthday, man. mama. So Where Where mama live? My mother live in Minnesota right now. Minnesota. All right. Well, happy birthday, Kathy. Thank you. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate the best club. Charlamagne the God. DJ Envy, man. Keep doing what y'all do, man. I love y'all, man. Thank good you, love you King. Hello. Who's this? Hey, good morning. It's Will Ball from Jersey. How you guys doing? What's up, brother? Get it off your chest. Okay. Uh, uh, briefly, uh, is Ebony K there this morning? She's here this morning. She's How you doing? Is. Oh, I'm, I'm doing great. I just wanted to say I remember listening to you when you spoke to Curtis, when you were on with Curtis in the morning. I think you held your own in a very difficult circumstances as far as the uh, 
the but, audience that listens to that show. And then now, as we see some of the things that Curtis has been saying, he's one of those that's been using justice to hide some of his true feelings towards people of color. But I digress. She talks about that in her new book, Bet on Black. I sure do. Thank you. Thank you, Charlamagne. Oh, well, you, I appreciate that, Bray. It was not a lot of us uh, over there when I was at WABC during those days. Uh, first black woman to uh, co-host anything over there in that conservative talk space. So I really appreciate that, bro. Thank you. Yeah, it was tough. A couple of times I, I could hear it in your voice where, you, where I could see that you're probably looking at him like, bro, did you really just say that? Yeah, you're right but, about but that. But on to my point... Mm-hmm. What we have to do now as civilians is we have to go and, and embrace this police chief because it's not a coincidence mm-hmm. that the one time that the, the uh, arrest and firing of these officers happened so rapidly was it was a person of color, a black woman. Uh, absolutely. Now, I'm pretty sure she's getting tons of hate mail and things and so forth. So we have to do the same thing on the other side. Send us so much love, thank you, uh, encouragement. Because what people see, do you guys remember, I believe it was in South Carolina when they had a black uh, chief and half of the force walked out. I don't know if you guys remember, remember that. that. I don't. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, and you can could, you could look it up. But my overall point is, is when officers, we always tell the good cops, step up, say something, do something, sure. intervene. But we as civilians have to let them know that we have their back. Because they, they're going to be like, well, I'm in a no-win situation. My co-workers are going to turn their back on me. And the public, they, they look at me as a cop, and they're not going to support me. So I might as well just be quiet and put my head down and keep on going and let the status quo continue. So we have to let cops know that when they go ahead and do the right thing, that we have their back. And, we, and if they have some things going on in the locker rooms or when they're out on patrol and they're not they getting any help, come to a uh, platform such as yours and let, them, and let you guys know that, hey, listen, I did this. And this is what's happening to me right now. And then we can go ahead and, and uh, shoot, no pun intended, that officer uh, some help or some assistance or some support. I agree with that, but I wonder, Ebony, does that even matter? Because, like, you know, at the end of the day, they still got to go deal with the, the bureaucracy. The, yeah. of who's here. Listen, I, I, I think to positive reinforcement of great black uh, police chiefs, prosecutors, Kim mm-hmm. Fox, and, you mm-hmm. know, cooking, that is important. Uh, but it's not going to make their job easier. Word. Right. Nah. Okay. Exactly. Nah, let's not get that twisted. <laughs> get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. When we come back, we got your room report. Cameron, he turned down $300,000 uh, for an uh, uh, item he had. And we'll tell you why when we come back. Don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Everybody, it's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got our special uh, guest with us, uh, Miss Ebony K. Williams. Her That's book right. is out right Stuff now. Right Better on Black. And let's get to rumors. Let's talk camera. Rumor has it. Rumor. Rumor has it. Call out a name, or you gossiping, or you chatty. I patty. am gossiping. This is the rumor report. I mean, I guess we on the Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Yes. Right. On the Breakfast Club. Now, you know that iconic pink fur that Cameron uh, has that uh, Drake was wearing in that concert the other, about two weeks ago. Absolutely. Somebody offered him $300,000 for that mink. I believe that. And he turned it down. I purchased that jacket probably literally, realistically, 20 years ago at a store called Apollo Signature in Harlem on 125th Street. What's the most somebody that ever offered you for that jacket? 300000 I didn't say ever, but I'm talking about the people who offered it to me. I didn't feel they deserved it. It was more of a stat to me saying, yo, I bought Kim's jacket. It wasn't really like they appreciated where that jacket came from. If it makes sense to sell it to somebody who would appreciate it or put it where it's going to be seen and be a stork that people know it's my jacket, cool. You know, you got rich suburban kids who be like, hey, Kim, my girlfriend really loves your pink jacket. I don't really know too much about it, but I'll buy it for her. You know, how much do you want for it? Like that type, you know what I'm saying? I wonder how much Cam has spent in dry cleaning on that jacket over the years. Because if not, it's got to have like a like a smell, right? No, not necessarily. Why? Because he wears... The weed smoke? Oh, the weed smoke. Nah, but that the alcohol is out. that spilled on it? It is out That easily. adds to value. You that adds so? to the value. That's the authenticity. <laughs> but I wanted to buy Cam Ron's. Remember that pink range over here? Yeah. Mm. I wanted to buy Cam's pink range for my car shows. I thought that's, mm. that's like hip-hop... Icon. Icon, yeah. classic cars. You Why wouldn't you just buy a Range Rover and paint it pink? Like, who would know fra- the difference? That's fraudulent. Who would know, though? He would know. People wouldn't know. They'll, uh, anytime you see a pink Range Rover, you're going to think Cameron, whether it's the original version or not. Period. I, I ain't think it's about It's like that. when you see a pink fur, you think Cameron, right. regardless. Right. Don't do it, Envy. That's fraud. Yo, that pink fur is so iconic. Lil Nas X was Cam for Halloween. I know. And all he had to do was put the pink, pink fur, fur on. Yeah, with I know. The pink uh, hat. Yeah. 
because I, I really uh, I'm, I'm gonna look into it again because I, I found it but I was thinking about buying it and I think I just think it'd be a dope asset for the car show you don't even gotta have. do a Range Rover you can do a Land Rover and nobody no, will know the nah, nah, that's absolutely not that's part not. of it to have don't get no pink discovery range, don't get you know no pink mean? discovery you get the don't pink get no discovery. pink discovery yeah, nobody wanted, will know I was trying to buy <laughs> Cam's <laughs> Cam's Range Rover, Rover. Uh, Slick Rick's uh, Old Rolls Royce I was trying to buy and I was trying to buy Nas's Mercedes Benz like those iconic cars mm-hmm. that they wanted covers I just thought that would be dope for the car show alright now NBA Youngboy you know he's out in Utah and he was talking about how sometimes he's lonely I'm terrified of people and I'm very shy but I never knew why once I walk on the stage I would get it done but I'm terrified of people People are cruel. It's like you can't control ourselves. So you never know what someone will do you. I always wanted to be a rapper. It's always my dream. I never had a plan B. Can't be on top forever. You know, I will not be provoked. I will, and I'm not going back to where I used to be. I only will get more groovy from here. He also talks about uh, how Mormons used to come to his house all the time. You know, in Utah, it's a huge Mormon town. And at first, he would turn them away. But then he started looking at it and saying, you know what, let me let me bring them in. Let me start having a conversation with him. Mm. And he was lonely and he started having conversations with him. And now he's thinking about possibly he might become a Mormon. All I know is uh, we got that audio. He playing audio? No, no, no. no okay. No, well, that, that, that young man needs therapy. That's all. You know what I mean? To unpack some of that. That's it. It's just that simple. The brother sounds so vulnerable. And that's how anxiety works, right? Like you may mm. not want to be around people. You know, people may make you uncomfortable, but when you get in front of a microphone or something or get on that stage, all that goes away. Why? I don't know for some people, but that young brother just needs therapy to unpack some of that. That's all. Yeah. You think You think the fact that he's all the way in Utah, away from friends and family and associates, you think that hurt or help? Cause Probably the best thing for him. Yeah. <laughs> he's disconnecting. Yeah. Mm. You also talk about that a little bit as well. I think I grew out of liking music, but it's like, it's therapy. It's the only way I can express it. I sit down behind the mic and just let things fly out of my mouth. Man, I was flooded with millions of dollars from the time I was 16 to this point in my life. And I woke up one morning and I was like, damn, got me. Man, look at the shit I spoke about. Look at the shit I put in these people's ears. And now I'm sitting back like, damn, I can't do it. But I promise to clean whatever I can clean. A lot of self-awareness in that man's words. Mm-hmm. That's how I know he's paying attention. You know what I mean? He's he's, he's, he's intentionally mm-hmm. paying attention to his growth and his evolution. His so, music is his journaling. Yes. That's what yeah. I hear. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think he wants to change that. I think he's realizing mm-hmm. the effects he has on these kids and people mm-hmm. and wants to change that and want to you know and, and I love that and you know why I think Utah doesn't hurt him because I think uh, as you get older you're very cognizant of uh, what makes your energy go up and what makes mm-hmm. your energy go down mm-hmm. so if he's in an environment that makes his energy go down wherever he was but mm-hmm. he he knows it goes up in Utah you go find that pocket of joy if Utah's where he finds his joy why not now I believe he was in Utah because of probation or something so I'm just wondering once that's over if that's true does he leave Utah? Does not he go if back that's to where Louisiana? His does he move to Atlanta? Does you know? Not where if that's does he where, he where his piece is, and not if that's where he has discipline, right? Because yeah. actually, sometimes terms of probation and stru- the structure of that can be a lifesaver. Mm-hmm. I've seen it. Well, all stars in Utah this this <laughs> this year, so mm-hmm. the whole everybody gonna be out there in the next two three weeks. Damn. <laughs> is that what you call a disturbance yeah, of the that, peace? That is definitely <laughs> is disturbance. that a disturbance? <laughs> just, y'all yeah. don't have places where y'all find peace? Like, just, Absol- like random Tulum. places? To Tulum, Mexico. I go okay. first every year by myself. Okay. Yeah. Tulum. What about yours? Um, Outside of the crib and outside of, out of the Yeah, States? outside of the home. Oh, there's so many different places. What a blessing, though, that you find peace in your home. Now, you know what? I found more, I find more peace <laughs> no, in my home. No, some people don't. No, my peace is my home. Like, that's yeah. when I go in the house and I don't have to worry about anything. It's just, yeah. you're just Rashawn. You're just dad. You're just mm. babe. You're just boo. You're like, mm-hmm. and, I, and that's that's my peace. My random peace location is Atlantic City. Why? I do not know. Really? When I go to Atlantic mm. City for whatever reason, because, you know, my daughter does cheerleading yeah, competitions, yeah, yeah, yeah. so she has a lot of cheerleading competitions in Atlantic City. When I go to Atlantic City and stay in the hotel I like to stay at, for some reason, I'm... I just disconnect in a different way. I hear, st- I, I, I get stillness in a different right. way in That's Atlantic great. City. But I think my, my office too, I have an office in Jersey where it's like a warehouse where my cars are mm-hmm. and I just get to look at the cars and it just puts me in a peaceful place. Just mm-hmm. relaxes me. I have everything there that I need and just... Yeah. Another one I got to shout out is um, Salamander Resort in D.C. Black owned. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bob uh, Johnson. 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 Man, that thing is nice. Really? Horseback riding. uh, In D.C.? 
Right, it's right outside. Virginia. Mid- Middle- Middleton, I think Virginia. Oh, Virginia, yeah, Virginia, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. fabulous. She really. balling. I don't know if y'all, I don't know if y'all paying Got attention to what Sheila Johnson doing. Uh, you need to Google Sheila Johnson. Sheila yeah. Johnson out here winning in duh. a different way. I'm just saying. She's my role model. No, Let me be very balling. clear. All right. She got a few of those resorts all around yes, the world. Yes, I think Anguilla. Anguilla, she got one. Yeah. She got one in Virginia. Some just opened a D.C. Metro Hotel. Yeah. She balling, balling. Drop on the clues, Mom. She's Johnson. my hero. Don't know her, but she balling. And lastly, uh, Dr. Phil's show is ending after 21 seasons. Mm. So congratulations Hell to Dr. Run. Phil. Yeah, what a run. 21 seasons. Drop on the clues, Mom, for Dr. Phil. Yeah. I know, I was clapping because it was ending, but go ahead. You don't like... Oh, damn it, man. <laughs> Jesus. Dr. Phil had a great run. He had you don't a great, like, great like run. Dr. Phil. He's 72 years old. I don't give a damn how old he is. Why you didn't like Dr. Phil? <laughs> Break it down. got to do anything. Yeah, well, yeah, why you don't like Dr. I just thought Oprah could have given the platform to someone more culturally relevant. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's. I got a whole theory. Don't We'll, we'll, we'll do it So you don't time. mess with Dr. Phil, I Dr. don't do Oz. Phil. I don't do... Uh, look, look. She tried, look at she, it. She tried with Ayanna Little. But Did that, she? Yeah, but that didn't go right. I mean, from what I, what what we've read and what you know, mm. Ayanla said. Oh, she tried mm. with Ayanla. All right. Rachel Roy, she put on. I get what you're saying, though. Yeah, but yeah, you don't I like you do. white doctors. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no! <laughs> I will say though, Doctor Phil. Very hey. fair kind of me. <laughs> That's Do- very fair. Doctor Phil's been up to the Breakfast Club a few times. I've been on I, his show too. He's helped me sell some books. I will tell you that much. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, Phil- that's good. That's very proud <laughs> of him. And Doctor Oz. Doctor Phil and Doctor Oz. Yeah. Oh. Doctor Phil, Phil for sure. When I put out a uh, shook one, he bought me on. And he said this is well. That's on brand. Very that's on brand. Book. Yeah, yeah. 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 Doctor Oz helped me save my, my my daughter when she was very very sick. He got her transferred to a better hospital and took care of my. Well, my daughter that's very good. He almost took the state of Pennsylvania to help, but I'm glad that he was helpful to you. Man, I'm very serious. That's crazy. He's, he's, he's talking about his doctor. I didn't know why. His politics, I, I don't know about the politics, that. but when it came to the doctor, yeah. he saved my, you know, save my little baby. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. I don't know Him about Him and Ben Pens- Carson. Pens- okay, go ahead. All right. <laughs> Up next, we got front page news. Don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning, Jesus. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Looking to turn a small bet into a big payday? With DraftKings Sportsbook Same Game Parlays, you can pocket more cash when you can buy multiple bets from one game. Download the app, sign up with code ENVY, that's E-N-V-Y, and get a special offer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. See how that works. Right? What's that? I was trying to see if he was just talking about the term SMD. Yes. And how if you say that to somebody, like those are like, those are final words. Like final. we'll never deal with you ever again. So never it again. be final. And you, uh, Ebony said that's a final play. It is. It's a and final I, play. But then it's foreplay when it's done the right way. Yo, shut up, <laughs> I'm man. Just saying. Oh, <laughs> I'm, MG. I'm just saying. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. We are The Breakfast Club. Our guest host, Ebony K. Williams, is here. And let's get in some front page news. Front page news. Yes, y'all. Yesterday, we laid to rest the dear brother, Tyree Nichols, 29 mm. years old, gone far too soon. Mm-hmm. Father, someone's son. Uh, we, we talked earlier about how his mother spoke of course at his funeral vice president kamala harris spoke but what we didn't get to is the good al sharpton reverend al sharpton who has led the community and culture through so many instances like this he had words as well is that five black men that wouldn't have had a job in the police department in the city that dr king lost his life not far away from that balcony, you beat a brother to death. There's nothing more insulting and offensive to those of us that fight to open doors, that you walk through those doors and act like the folks we had to fight for to get you through them doors. Understand that there's needs to deal with crime, but you don't fight crime by becoming criminals yourself. That ain't the police, that's punks. So here's where I think the, 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 I was about to say the ancestors, excuse me, misstatement. The uh, elders in the culture are actually very important mm-hmm. because he is connecting dots there, y'all, with really like geographically. This is where Dr. King was assassinated, mm-hmm. not gave his life because he didn't give nothing. Mm-hmm. He, he was taken he was away. Killed, he was murdered. He was assassinated. And, and within a, a thrown stow, you black men who really live in the legacy of Dr. King execute your own brother. Mm-hmm. I do think that type of cultural correlation is important. And that's what I talk about in Bed on Black. Uh, beyond that, I like that Al Sharpton talked about, uh, you know, that's not protecting crime, but. Let's be clear what Tyree Nichols will stop for, y'all. Allegedly, reckless driving. Shouldn't lead to that. That's not even not really of criminal nature like that. I was going to ask you earlier because yeah. I thought they said that 
after watching the cameras, they found out that he wasn't driving reckless. That's why. That's why I said allegedly. Mm-hmm. Uh, only the officers' reports right. are even suggesting that right now. The prosecutor's office, great point, Envy, is not even collaborating with that right. argument. They're not mm-hmm. even cooperating. For all we know, that brother could have been doing nothing wrong, and that's right. probably what the prosecutors will argue. Right. I, I still wish uh, Al Sharpton, Reverend Al, would have addressed the system of policing though because based off the clip I just heard Reverend Al made it seem like this is an isolated incident especially when he said this isn't policing this is punks well if that's the case we've seen a lot of punks then because this seems like the norm in regards to policing and I I totally understand scolding them because you know they're black and it's, it's, it's black police officers but it's not just black poli- police officers who do stuff like but, this but this, is, was also, this. this was a funeral though this was a eulogy though you know what I mean this, is, this wasn't his platform to well, talk well, about everything well everybody went up there and addressed uh, politics in some way shape or form mm. everybody did I have a question something you said uh, triggered me I've been having this in my group chats should the black officers be held to an even higher standard because they are black well, that's a cultural thing, right? That's, that's us. That's what I'm. A- that's what I'm asking. Because we we hope that you know uh, black people get in those positions, mm-hmm. and that's how they change the culture. Yeah, I ain't of talking policing. about the law. I mean, us culturally. No, nah, I mm-hmm. think they should just get no. life regardless. I, regardless, I, I, regardless, I don't care if they black, white, Asian, yeah. Spanish. It doesn't matter. They, well, uh, they should that, be held that, to the highest a, point of the law. No, it's a now, nu- it's a nuanced answer, right? Because yes, as black people, I do hold them to a higher standard because you shouldn't do because they look like us, yeah, absolutely. Like yeah. But when it comes but to just the system of the policing, justice, I want right. that all to be the law same. Law is yes. equal, but That's for right. me, I'm I'm more right. outraged because yeah. you should understand Correct. the humanity yes. of your yes. black yes. brother better absolutely. than some yes. white yeah. person who is systematically yes. otherizing us. I agree. Yeah, I do hold them to a higher cultural standard personally as a black person. As a black person, yes. All right, this one's interesting. I want to get your take on this, Envy. I know you were. Talking about it a little bit. Biden pr- is proposing a new bill, new piece of legislation. It's got a junk fee part like in it. Yeah, I know you like this. I it like cuts this. out hidden fees, y'all, for credit cards, uh, concert tickets. We saw, mm-hmm. you know, all the ticket master of it all, all yep. that going on in the U.S. Senate. Uh, and it would target four excessive types of fees specifically. Online concert tickets, yep. sporting events, which I hate. Yep. Uh, hotels. Uh, hotels. Yep. Air fees. Yes. Airline fees. Yep. All these little hidden costs that take it. your shopping cart expense from fifty dollars to two hundred and fifty dollars. Let me just tell the people exactly what it is. When you yeah. go to book a hotel and the hotel says ninety nine dollars, and you go there with ninety nine dollars, and then they tell you they charge your resort fee of twenty nine ninety nine, and now your hotel is one thirty, and you don't know where that resort fee is coming from. Yeah. That's the fee they should take off because I never understand that. Same and what's thing with it the, going towards? Same thing with the airlines there's an airline fee where does that money go to i just paid my ticket why do i gotta pay an additional 40 dollars? Yeah. same thing with sporting events if you go to a sporting totally. event or any show on Ticketmaster, any of those things you pay uh, let's say 30 dollars for the ticket then they charge you a 9.99 uh ticket fee what process is that fee? yeah what is that process processing hey man yes. i've been feeling like that since the days of buying little debbie's and mcdonald's value meals now i'm talking about taxes though when something is 99 cents and it's a dollar five and all you got is a dollar and now you're looking around for a nickel <laughs> That's tax, kid. Though. You that can't hurt about that. I know, but that's a junk fee to me. You know what I mean? When you go to McDonald's and the value meal used Just to be two ninety nine, that was double three twenty four. Taxes? Three, well, it was three fourteen back then. Oh, it was three twenty four. Three fourteen. Because I think the taxes are higher. You know what I'm And all you got is three dollars. Yes. You thought it was two ninety nine. You thought I'm, you had an extra penny. That's right. When I was young and didn't know any better yeah. about taxes. When you were a kid, and now you're not that's a right. kid anymore, Charlemagne. But that was a junk fee to me then. Yeah, no, I agree. Taxes are a junk fee. Period. Can we get rid of taxes? Can we put taxes? Can we consider taxes a junk fee, Mr. IRS? Uh, that's not Rashawn talking. That is Leonard. That's Leonard. But you know, Ebony K. Williams is saying, <laughs> K. Williams is saying uh, get rid of these income tax. I don't mind a consumer tax. Mm. If I if I'm using a good, I'll pay your tax. Okay. But that income tax, that's my money. Give me my money. Word. So you don't want to pay no taxes. I do, not on my income, Envy. I'm gonna tell you why though. Well, I, I'll make an argument. Tell me. Because my federal government nor my state or local government has shown me that they are good stewards of my Ooh, money. That's mm-hmm. right. Why? We don't know where our bread going. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. We, that's we right. got failing public schools. That's right. right. We that's got right. cracks in the road. That's we got right. bridges that are barely holding well, up. The schools right. should be your, your your housing tax, which you pay your taxes on on your house. That should be the schooling. But yeah. the things I have. Well, I spend a lot of money on my house, y'all, uh, Envy. So that's the school tax. Yeah. That's, that's where your kids go to school. Mm-hmm. But like when you talk about the roads, I want to know where that that happens. I want to talk about the judges, the prosecutors, the police officers, the fire. Firefighters, that's supposed to be your regular tax. Yeah. If I knew my money was actually going to make other people's lives better, I would have no problem with that. 
Same. But I don't know where that bread is going. Therefore, right. I'm with Ebony K. Williams. Yeah, a lot of it's going to the military. <laughs> Eliminate taxes. Yeah. <laughs> Eliminate taxes. No new taxes. <laughs> Call us the new Jesus. Party. All right. All right. One more. Uh, we got time for it? No, no. We got to no, go. We got to wrap? Yeah, All we right. got commercials. But uh, let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. Ebony K. Williams is here. You know she's an attorney. So let's hold court. Yeah, I know you, you listen to her podcast, Holding Court. Mm-hmm. You sure. know what I mean? Where she gives out a lot of uh, great legal advice. Right. I'm sure that y'all might need some legal advice right now. That's right. 800-585-1051. If you need legal advice, call her now. Come on now. now. Think about it like this. This is now. free. If you call an attorney, you know they're going to charge you $1,000 just to come inside <laughs> and then $500 an hour. That's right. <laughs> We're getting it right now for on the low low. 800. As far as we know. We might get invoiced later. <laughs> we might get invoiced I don't later. Know. As far as we know. All right, so if you got some, uh, if you need some legal advice, you got some questions, call us now. 800-585-1051. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Everybody, it's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got our guest host, Ebony K. Williams, joining us. That's right. What's now, that? she's an attorney. She's definitely an attorney. And uh, and she's a podcast host. Uh, she's a podcast host. Her so podcast she, host she has her court. own show coming up. With the good brother, Dustin. Yeah, she has her uh, own yeah. court show coming out, mm-hmm. Equal Justice. But, you know, she gives out legal advice quite often on her podcast, Holding Court. Correct. And since we have her here and we got her for the low low. As, as far free, as we know, it's free ninety nine. Okay, it's free right. we got that. Repeat that recorded, please. <laughs> yeah, we got yeah. that recorded. So oh, that's, that's on the record. That's on the record. Enter, enter that into evidence. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So eight hundred five eight five one zero five one. If you need any type of legal advice, she's here, and we'll go right to the lines. Hello, who's this? Hey, this is Jay. Jay, what's up, man? What's your question for Ebony? So listen, I didn't have custody of my daughter since she was three. She just turned twelve last year. I like even um kind of going through some things so I kind of let her move back in with her mom mm-hmm. but now it's a situation where my daughter wants to move back with me but her mom wants to kind of keep her and I understand because they've been missing that time but I think my daughter's just more comfortable staying with me but we haven't filed any like custody papers or nothing like that other than like when I went to court when she was three yeah so it's like do I should I have got any papers establishing custody what can I do? Like, yeah. so it's let me let like, me help you out, Jay. Let me help you out. It's real. It's actually pretty simple on this one. The good news about uh, child support and child custody: there's only one actual law. Best interest of the child. That's it. it can, mm. It's it's totally controlling. Who makes that decision? That will be a judge in family court. So this is the thing, Jay. If you've had custody since from three to twelve, you probably still have legal and physical custody, but for a change in the agreement. Um. So if you really want your daughter to come back and stay with you, and that's what she wants, you could probably have that happen. If your wife tries to uh, ex wife rather her mother tries to fight you for it, then you can petition a court for sole legal and physical custody and the judge will decide who is her best interest and if it's you you're good okay. good luck brother hello who's this hi good morning what's your question for ebony k williams all right so i went to court back in november four. for a child support court got it so the next thing i knew um i'm waiting the judge uh we have to be let in through zoom so we get in my ex-husband gets in everybody's in the judge says okay well Sir, how can you prove that you have a diagnosis from a doctor that says you cannot work? Mm. He says, well, I never went to a doctor, but I have a condition called drop foot. And the judge is like, well, I would need some medical documentation saying that you have this condition and you cannot work. Mind you, this is a man that just came to New York in September and built his mom's basement. Okay. So he, he he's very functional, you understand? Mm-hmm. I hear you. So I'm in the Zoom meeting just watching all this play out. He told the judge, well, I've been sending her $150 a month. This only started the month before court. And the only reason he started doing that is because he got served with the court papers. Right. So this is not something he has been doing and whatnot. Why did the judge order him to continue paying $150 without no medical documentation and without asking for any taxes? Without There was no papers that he put in. Like, I had to put in my income. I had to put in my bank statement. I had to put, you know, I forgot the word that it happens before court. You have to add all these documents in via the sure. Internet. Sure. and Uh-huh. I said, so, so is your issue that you want him to pay more child support? I want him to pay a proper amount. 
All right, so let me tell you what to do. I hear you. I totally hear your frustration. It sounds like what what you're telling me sounds like a lot of steps were missed, but let's get to solutions, right? So you need to file uh, an amendment. You need to say you want an amendment to your child support order. You need to suggest to the court whatever you think is a reasonable amount, five hundred dollars, seven fifty, whatever it is for you, sis. And then, not even. I just I wanted four hundred dollars a month. So then that's what you you got to do the legwork. And this is frustrating, y'all, because in child support and family law, it's not like criminal law. It's not even like civil law. It's all on the it's all on the parties to do the legwork. And I, I know that that does not seem fair. It's very but expensive. Before you you saying thing, I've done this yeah. three times. Mind you, I fought for custody for my daughter six times. And the only reason I didn't win before is because he worked at a job that paid him $160,000 a year. So he wasn't trying to give up my daughter. He wasn't because he knew he would have to pay me 17% of his paycheck. Correct. And he was like, no, I want custody of her. She's doing good in school. This is a child. I had called in years ago. This is a child that they put in a cab at five years old to take a cab, a regular cab. Like you call the cab company and they come and this is all of that. This is from stemming from all of that. Yeah. I finally got custody after paying $9,000 to a different lawyer. Yeah. And I got custody. The judge was like, no, wait a minute. This isn't right. Mm -hmm. So now look, I'm dealing with this again with child support. It's ridiculous. So, so what do you what do you suggest? Yeah, it's a frustrating system, man. I, I hear it in her voice. You can hear the emotion there, and that's real. Because family court systems are essentially a made up system, and right. they and they are designed for money. You know what I mean? And by the way, what she mentioned about her ex or whatever making one sixty a year and going for full custody that's that's getting very common. You see the high earning parent, male or female, non binary, don't matter, saying I'm no longer willing to concede high child support payments just give me custody we see it all the time i mean i just you know and not to, to do anybody's you know what they make but if you make one hundred and sixty thousand dollars and all you give for that child is 150 dollars trash something's nope. wrong it's trash well, come on there's taxes so technically that person probably only making like an 80 90 but still 150 dollars for your child a month? a month and your child's old five years old six years old that's a lot of money in some places no, 150 dollars no. a month when you make that much money come on bro no sharp i'm not saying that's bro. good she, she, she deserves more bro. but that is a lot of money some people don't get that i know people that get 40 dollars in child support yeah but do they make do, do their partner make 160 thousand dollars? i don't know you know i don't I, you know you have kids you know 150 dollars but between food activities schooling Clothes. Transportation. No, 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 don't put me in this situation, sir. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Take no, no, me no, out. No, no, don't put me in this. All right. okay, I'm not a good example. Eight hundred five eight five one zero five one. Ebony K. Williams is here. Of course, she's an attorney, and she's at. She's answering all your legal questions. So call her now. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Our guest host Ebony K. Williams is here. Of course, she's an attorney, and she's answering all your legal questions for free. That's right. I said free, so you better call up and ask her what you need. And we have uh, Brandy on line three. Brandy, good morning. Hi, good morning. Good, good morning, morning, Brandy. Brandy. What's your question? So my question is, I bought a truck from one of major parts, a used truck. And within the first 48 hours, my service engine light came on. And I have went through, this was January and my truck has been serviced by this company minimum of 10 times. Mm. I have been promised by different managers that they're going to fix it. They're going to replace my truck. And now, here we are. Truck still acting up. It's not working right. And now they're dodging me. And mm. I can't get any help anywhere. So, I'm just wondering, legally, do I have any feet on yeah brandy i got good news for you you got a case um depending on where you live um it sounds like uh you said you, the, the truck started acting funny after did you say 48 hours yes ma'am okay yeah so most states have a lemon law a lemon law says if your vehicle uh starts acting up it could be anywhere from 30 days uh to i've seen up to 90 days you are entitled to a new vehicle you don't even have to continue to, to pay or invest in service uh but but you are going to need a lawyer uh, and, and my hope for you, Miss Brandy, is you can find an attorney that specializes in lemon law litigation that will take your case on a, um, a contingency fee uh, versus a retainer uh, and, allow, and allow you to uh, pay their fees after you get some uh, relief. That's my hope for you, dear. Okay. Good luck, Mama. Okay. I just thank you so much. You're welcome. Hello. Who's this? 
Hi, my name is Sabrina. How are you? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning. Sabrina. What's your question for Ebony K. Williams? So I purchased a home in 2020. So my mortgage was 2500 And I told them 2022, the bank said they made a mistake. I didn't have enough in escrow, so now the mortgage is $3,402. Mm. Is that legal? Can they do that? First of all, congratulations on your home purchase, Sabrina. Uh, I would need a couple more facts to give you a solid answer. But the short answer is probably, actually, uh, because of the nature of the fiscal agreement between your lender and yourself. The, basically, you were given a mortgage payment uh, amount on a conditional term. And and once they right. felt that they made a mistake, I hear you, it was their mistake of not uh, calculating the escrow uh, account properly. Uh, th- but then you would have to carry the ex- the extra expense. That's that's likely the scenario. Okay. And remember, okay. escrow can change depending, you know. So if yeah. your tax goes up, your escrow can go up. Also, if you have a, a adjustable rate, it can go up as well. And same thing with insurance because insurance is an escrow as well. So if your insurance goes up, meaning there's a lot of stolen cars in your neighborhood, your insurance goes up, your escrow can go up as well. So you just need to find out why it went up. Check your escrow because it, ha- it happened to me the other, other day. My, mine actually went down and I was trying to figure out what happened. I thought I wasn't paying enough. But depending on taxes and insurance, your escrow can go up and down. Okay. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you, Miss Sabrina. Hello. Who's this? Hey, this is Kay. All right. What's your question for Ebony K. Williams? Okay, so I have a seven-year-old son. He's in second grade. He came home um, last week Wednesday and he told me that his teacher during a lesson said that black people need to smile so that we can see them. Um, whoa, whoa, I, whoa. That's an old joke. My, Jesus whoa. Christ. That's an old <laughs> school joke. Yeah, you can't tell one. me that ain't an old school joke. Hey, that's an, Lord oh have mercy. Oh, my God. Go ahead, Miss K. Damn. Oh, okay, so I contacted the school, the assistant principal. She didn't seem as upset as I that, that she should have been, that someone in her school is, you know, teaching kids this. Um, I went a little further. I decided to contact the teacher. She did admit to me that it was something that she stated, but at a the purpose of stating that in in, in a lesson. Um, I didn't like the way that then went, so then I contacted the dean of the school. I, I sent an email so that I can have a record of me contacting. Um, I then got another call from the head principal. Long story short, they moved his class, um, which is what I was asking, but he's not okay. He's not okay mentally. He's not okay emotionally. Even though he's only eight, just turned eight on Sunday, he's very in touch with his feelings. Um, he doesn't understand why um, someone would say of a different color that his color, he has to smile to be seen. Um, mm. He just keeps saying, just turn on the light. He's crying. Oh, um, oh my God. Stop laughing. Stop laughing. These are old, school, jokes. These are old oh school jokes, man. Okay, let's, okay listen. Listen, let me... Let me, let me on the she, light. Jesus Christ. Let me try to help you out here. So this is horrific, mm. what you're describing. I actually, not even joking with you, I think you need to think about Colin Bean Crump. I really do. Mm. Um, because I think mm-hmm. what you're going to have a case for is what we call emotional distress. Okay, that's a tort mm-hmm. claim. That's, that's a classic tort came, claim that mm-hmm. says that someone has intentionally inflicted, and by this, in this case, it would be the words, right? Uh, saying mm-hmm. something so outrageous, horrendous, um, soul-crushing to a young, formative years, your son's seven, the understanding identity, who they are in this world, which is already mm-hmm. hard enough. Uh, and for mm-hmm. someone, especially a white person, even if a black teacher said this, I want to be clear, y'all, right. you still got a claim. Absolutely. You know, mm-hmm. but a white teacher saying it, it makes it just more egregious towards your son. So I think you got mm-hmm. a legitimate emotional distress co- uh, complaint. And l- what does that look like uh, in terms of money? You g- you would get damages to make sure your son has payment for his uh, mental health treatment. Uh, if he needs mm-hmm. any anti-anxiety or anti-depression medication. Like, so we would add all that up in the claim. And so we want this mm-hmm. times 10, 15, 20 for punitive damages. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Call Ben oh, or some civil rights attorney. Yeah. Good luck, Mama. Okay, I've been, uh, thank you so yeah, much. Did you, did you go to the school and, 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 and call the teacher some names? That's what I was going to say. I was going to say you should have put the little man with some <laughs> jokes. I'm trying to do it the right way. <laughs> right, but, right, but you're right. right. You, you got to tell him stay on the floor. He fell on the floor. Okay. Stay there. You hurt. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, you right. right. But just just so you know, just so Charlemagne, right? Teacher says something. What, what would you respond? I got to see the teacher. You know what I'm saying? If she white, she going to get some white jokes. But what, so she goes to... 
No, I wouldn't say nothing racial. No. You know what I mean? I'll call him mayonnaise or something like that. You okay. know what I mean? Because oh, that's not racial at all. <laughs> that's not racial. <laughs> that's right. Right. That's not racial at all. That's all. I mean, something light. Yeah. Something light. light. I would have to see the teacher, though. I'm sure that there's some good uh, some good things that he could have said about the teacher, but you're doing the yes, right thing. Yes, he could have. He could have. Nah, cash out, guys. Kay. Teach us on the cash Thank out. You. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You walk in the store and you slip and fall, you stay on that floor. You stay, you stay on that ground. If somebody hits you in the back with a car, everything hurts. That's right. My neck, my back, my neck and my, my neck back. And you, my back. You, you're doing the right thing. Right. You know what I mean? But all those right. are some old school jokes. I've heard all of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah those those By the way, I've used all of those. Like, that's, we used to use those back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Long but on, on each other. I never oh, heard yeah. a teacher yeah, that's say wild. that to a student. Not in 2023. No, no, no. I did hear teach, teachers used to body shame back in my day, though. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Teachers will call a kid fat in a minute. Yeah, fat ass, yeah. They'll call a kid fat in a minute. It wasn't nothing racially driven, but they'll call a kid fat in a minute. All right. 800-585-1051. Ebony K. Williams is still here. Yes, and make sure if you want more of that legal advice, man, subscribe to uh, the Holding Court Podcast with Ebony K. Williams, wherever you listen to podcasts. All right. And we got rumors on the way. Tiffany Haddish, will she be doing Girls Trip 2? We'll find out when we come back. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Is this Ro Timmy or this weekend? Weekend. How they do the same song in two years? Bro, Timmy just did this this song. Yeah. He just did it. I, 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 you played a weekend for me right now. I wouldn't know who that is. That's the weekend you said? I, that's, that okay, is the weekend, so right? you played a Ro Timmy one or the weekend. I still wouldn't know who they are. Same song? Same song. Okay. All right. Well, morning, everybody. We are The Breakfast Club. We got our guest host, Ebony K. Williams, joining us. Yes, indeed. And let's get to the rumors. Let's talk Tiffany Haddish. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty uh, patty. I don't gossiping. This is The Rumor Report. I mean, I guess we on The Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Yes. Right. On The Breakfast Club. All right, now we're talking Girls Trip 2. Now, Tiffany Haddish is speaking. Will she be a part of the next uh, Girls Trip? Girls Trip 2. Right, Casey Oliver says Girls Trip 2 is coming out. She says it every year, and I look forward to it. All right, there's a push for the film to come out, and there's also a little bit of a push saying that possibly you should be replaced or your character should be written out in Girls Trip 2. You know, as a result of the last controversy. Are you kidding? I'm asking your opinion on this. I will do anything with those women. I love those people. I love everybody that works on that. All right. And we had a blast. They want to work with me, I'm going to work with them. And for the record, I'd love, I'd love to see you on Girl Trip 2. I would love to see that too. And I know that the girls would love it too. We talked about it all. I can't be concerned about what people think. I got to be concerned about it. How I feel. Well, I want to see When I look you. in the mirror, yeah. mm -hmm. am I happy with what I see? Are you? Yes, ma'am. I would love to see her on Girls Trip too. Of course. I Absolutely. Think there's literally zero reason we shouldn't. <laughs> zero. zero. Like, Tiffany should be able to do Girls Trip too. Like, that video has been online for years. She mm -hmm. became a star with that video out there. And we mm -hmm. all regret old content. And that old content didn't keep her from being Tiffany Haddish. So it shouldn't right. stop nothing now. And if I recall correctly, because we did cover this on Holden Court, I believe that family apologized to Tiffany Haddish. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. Have you been on a Girls Trip? All the time. I take All one every year. Yeah. Let's I go mean, on one now. What kind I, of question is that? She's an AKA. Exactly. It's she got mandatory. an AKA shirt Not on right now. Right now. <laughs> I ask because my, my wife just went on a, on, a, on a girl's trip. And this was her first girl's trip ever. Oh, well, she but didn't she stay like a really long time? She, she, went, she went for 20 days. That's what 20 I heard. Days, yeah. like, that's a long trip. But just watching them happen, because they got to pack, you got to make sure the weight is the right right weight oh. when you travel. And well, they're on certain kind of... No, that, that's because they on that, that, PJ, that PJ. No, she they wasn't was on that PJ. They was, they yeah, was she, a Thailand. No, she's not. She's, she's not, not a Zeta. Don't do that. Taylor's mom's a Zeta, right? I don't know. I no, think I think so. I think Charlemagne just jokes. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What's wrong with Zaytus? Nothing. Oh, why? Why did you say Zaytus? I didn't say nothing. I didn't say nothing. I didn't say nothing. I didn't say nothing. I'm just saying Ebony says Zaytus don't go on trips. And Stop. AKAs do. No. That's what happened. <laughs> um, I want to say shout out to my sister Greeks, the lovely women of Zeta Phi Beta. You better stop Watch that. This. So what about Deltas? What do Deltas do then? I have no idea. No. They fly Delta wherever they go. They okay. go on a lot of trips. Salute all the Deltas. Out there. <laughs> all right. My mother in law the Deltas. Oh, okay. They gonna yeah. give you that smoke later on. Now, Kate yeah. Michelle, rightfully, she put this uh, on her Instagram yesterday on her social media. She says, "Question: Do y'all put your man's love juice in your hair to grow? <laughs> Am I late or something? Be honest." Your man's what? Love juice. What is love juice? Why y'all looking at me? Why y'all both looking at me like that? You don't know what your man's love juice is? Oh! <laughs> You're the guy, oh, man. Sometimes word, I'm like, word, this guy's slow, word, man. Word, word, That's what you okay, okay. How do you do this every day? I, I, I don't okay. know. How do you do okay. this every day? I don't know. It helps, you, it helps your hair grow? That's what she's asking. Is that true? I don't know. I've, I have heard, I promise this ain't me, but I have heard women use it as a serum for skin really? cell turnover. 
Y'all got to stop making excuses for why y'all like certain things. You know what I mean? That's why I, that's why I like the Horrible Decisions podcast because, you know, they tell you not to king shame. <laughs> you keep, know what I mean? Yeah, right. If you keep. like... Shout out to them. Putting uh, your man's love juice wherever you like to put it, just do it. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I'm not going to ask you a question. I want to know. No, ask you a question. I want to know. God wants you to ask me. Okay, so... God, don't bring God in this. <laughs> <laughs> don't you do that. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. So, so, <laughs> you, you talk about your struggles all the time about your hair growing. No, I don't. Yes, you do. I've never, <laughs> talked, about, I've never <laughs> had that conversation. You talk about the struggles of your hair happened. growing. You talk about the struggles. I, I, I rock a, a nice baldy. You talk about the struggles if you, if you could and you had the opportunity That's never you happened. have more hair. No, I never said that. Would you try this application to... No, Envy. I would right. not put a, a man's love juice in my hair. See would what I'm saying? Would you put your own love juice? No. Well, see, what you missed, Ebony, is he's been flirting with me. This is him flirting. It's not flirting. Because I cut it out. I told him this year I'm not going to be gay. <laughs> and he's been trying to flirt with me it's all year true. long. No, and was that was was that why he was licking his lips yesterday? Yes, I did. No, him. Can somebody put Excuse a compilation me. together yeah, for the mouth. week? <laughs> all right, okay. Of all of the times he's trying, a little happy too. So I am actually pursuing a single motherhood journey. No, that's the, that's the that's clip. clip. That's the clip that we discussed that right, they were supposed I, to play. That's what we were. That's, 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 that's the clip that was supposed to be in there. Because then we were going to talk about it next hour. That's that's what me and everyone didn't convey that to y'all producers. No, we did. We had a real conversation. Oh. Oh, now the clip's in. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. You're also dating again. My dentist, who is so sweet, Dr. Horry here in Manhattan, said, I know a really great guy for you. I really want you to meet him. I'm like, doctor, I'm kind of busy creating embryos and writing a book, but okay. She did introduce me. I think I might have been ghosted. Oh, um, no. I know. Welcome to the club. <laughs> um, but we'll see. My, my, my DMs and phone are still open. <laughs> Oh, you're gonna what, get some answers. He picked you up with somebody and then he ghosted yeah, you. Yeah, I think so. Terrible. Who wow. ghosts Ebony? Girl, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Well, I think it should change dentists. That's all. <laughs> now, since this is live radio, and you know we are very transparent with our Breakfast Club listeners. Yes. Aren't we discussing this in a few minutes? Right, but that's what we were doing. We were going to start it now and start the conversation now, open up the phone lines, talk to women, talk about the process of having a child and oh, what thought, she has okay. to go through. That's so, what we said. So I thought we were going to start the conversation after. No, we said we'll do it during the rumors oh. and then we talk it out now. Well, this y'all show, I'm doing. I'm going where y'all want to go. All right. Where, wherever y'all want to go. So let's talk about the process. You have the yes. process of actually freezing your eggs, right? So when I start with talking about what a single motherhood journey is by choice, because mm -hmm. that's the that's the new part. Mm -hmm. uh, I was raised by a beautiful single mother. Many of us are products of single mothers and no single mothers in our culture. Uh, but the difference is doing it by choice, not mm -hmm. circumstance, right? right? right, right. Um, so Whose love juice are you using? I have a lovely... That's a great question. Mm -hmm. I bought it. The answer, okay. I, I purchased love juice. But do you have, like, does he have to be tall? Does he have yeah, to let's be talk about successful? The, I, there was a whole criteria. Well, for the money I paid, Negro. Well, let's, <laughs> let, let, uh, you can't. Uh, who are you talking to right now? <laughs> let's talk. Let's talk. We'll, we'll, we'll do, we'll, Sir. We'll, we'll do it after Duncan. I want to hear okay. from a lot of uh, women out there that's thinking about going through the process or actually going through the process. Yes. 800 585 1051. Let's get into Donkey next. Who are you giving that Donkey to, bro? Oh, man, four after the hour. I, I'm not even joking when I say this. I've never heard of a story like this. We need a, a woman named Shara Ban K to come to the front of the congregation. We'd like to have a word with her. I bet you've never heard anything like this. All right, we'll get to that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Looking to turn a small bet into a big payday? With DraftKings Sportsbook Same Game Parlays, you can pocket more cash when you can buy multiple bets from one game. Download the app, sign up with code ENVY, that's E-N-V-Y, and get a special offer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. You get donkey at a date, yeah, you dumb ass. You get donkey at a date, yeah, you dumb ass. You are a donkey. It's time for donkey of the day. Donkey of the day, huh? I'm going to fatten all that shit around your eye. Man. They want this man to throw them blows, man. They're waiting for Charlemagne to tap these gloves. Let's go. They had to make the judgment of who was going to be on the donkey of the day. They chose you. Yes. It's a breakfast club, bitches. Who's donkey of the day today? Well, Ed Sheeran, donkey of the day for Thursday, February 2nd, goes to a young woman named Sharaban K. Okay, uh, that's what she's been identified as. I don't know what the K stands for on her birth certificate, but for, day, for today's e -haw, that case stands for Keller because allegedly that's what she is. Now, your Uncle Charlotte is a grown man. Okay, I was born in the 1900s. And at my big age, I've seen and heard a lot of things. I actually thought I saw it all. But the beauty of life is, if you live long enough, you will quickly realize you haven't seen nothing yet. And I believe that it's safe for me to say I have never in my 44 years of existence on this planet seen or heard a story like this. Okay, see, Shara Ban K decided she wanted to fake her own death. Now, 
we've always heard about people faking their own deaths, but none have ever been like like proven, right? For our generation, Tupac Shakur is the go-to faker of death, allegedly. That was a conspiracy theory before the internet, and the internet just amplified the conspiracy theory, but there have been people who have actually faked their death. Uh, go do your Googles. Look up uh, John Darwin. He faked the drowning in 2002 because he was looking for a life insurance payout, then they found him a year later in London. Uh, Samuel Israel was a former hedge fund manager. He got convicted of a Ponzi scheme in 2008, so he abandoned his car in upstate New York, and they found his car with the words, suicide is painless written uh, in the dust on the hood of the car but officers knew he didn't kill himself they found him hiding out living in an RV with his girlfriend a month later so there are real life examples you can point to in regards to folks faking their death I guess what I was saying earlier is I don't know if any have ever been successful I don't know if anybody's faked their death and like gotten away with it okay but there is one common theme to these fake deaths all right when these people fake a death nobody has ever really hurt in the faking of their death if it was a movie or a tv show that's what would be in the end credits like nobody was hurt in the faking of this death well in this Sharaban k situation that's not the case see Sharaban k uh allegedly killed murdered massacred slaughtered a 23 year old beauty blogger named khadijah o Okay, poor Khadijah was stabbed more than 50 times with her body left in the back seat of Sharaban's Mercedes. And then Sharaban and her boyfriend went into hiding. Now, when the body was found, police traced the car's registration to Sharaban K's family. And given the corpse had been disfigured, investigators assumed that Sharaban was the victim. Now, the only time I've seen something like this work was with Ray Gibson and Claude Banks in the movie Life when they stole the bodies from the morgue and put them in the fire so they can escape. Well, guess what? This ain't a movie, dog. okay? Cops might have thought it was you for a second, but everybody listening to me knows what came next because it happens to everybody after they pass. It's called an autopsy, okay? And the autopsy immediately let them know this is a Sharaban. Okay, the actual DNA let them know immediately that it was Khadijah O. So this woman Sharaban went on Instagram and, and, and she was contacting women, just contacted several women who looked like her just so she could kill one and go into hiding due to internal disputes with her family. That's why she decided she needed to fake her own death. Internal disputes with her family. She started sending the victim messages about cosmetics, and that's how she enticed the victim into meeting up with her uh, by offering her a set of beauty products. Now listen, y'all know one of my favorite books is The 48 Law of the Power, okay? I've read it several times, reference it, go back to it all the time. Law 29 in The 48 Law of the Power is planned all the way to the end. Okay, 48 Laws of Power tells you that the ending is everything, all right? Playing all the way to it, taking into account all the possible consequences, obstacles, and twists of fortune that might reverse your hard work and give the glory to others, okay? By planning to the end, you will not be overwhelmed by circumstances, and you will know when to stop, okay? Know when to stop. You gently guide fortune and help determine the future by thinking far ahead. Now, this shouldn't apply to murder, but it does. Because a plan is a plan. And at some point in this plan, Sharaban K or her boyfriend, who's an accomplice, should have said to themselves, this won't work because of the autopsy. An autopsy is performed to determine the cause of death, to observe the effects of disease, and to establish the evolution and mechanisms of disease processes. It can do all of that. So the least it can do is identify a body. So that alone should have made them abort mission on their plan. But no, she still decided to go on Instagram and find a lookalike to kill. Mm -mm -mm -mm. We really got to stress that people don't talk to strangers Okay, especially on social media Social media got us all too comfortable With violating basic rules of life That we learn when we kids, alright Don't talk to strangers Stop letting people violate your boundaries And into your space Just because y'all follow each other on social media And I promise you There is other ways to resolve conflict Alright, you having issues with your family So you decided the solution to that Is to kill someone in order to fake your death so you don't have to deal with the family issues. I'm not understanding this math equation, y'all. Okay, I feel like I'm trying to help my daughter with this new math they got in these schools because this just simply doesn't add up. Please give Shara Ban K and her boyfriend the biggest hee haw. I don't get it. Mm -mm. I don't get it. Because normally, like you said, <laughs> jokes aside, but back to the life movie, I've seen this. Mm -hmm. They just steal a corpse. Mm -hmm. Why'd you actually have to go kill somebody? Mm -hmm. But why did she think that was going to work when you know there's going to be an autopsy performed on the body? She probably didn't know. Didn't plan for the end. How do you that. not know? 
How do you not know they don't do autopsy? I have no idea. I, I don't get it. And then the, the the fact that you have internal family issues, mm. and that's where your mind goes, not you know family counseling, or just block them, or just block them. <laughs> stop dealing with your family. <laughs> right. Like yeah, that's like that's what your mind goes. I gotta find me a lookalike to kill to fake my own death to get away from my family. I, I don't get it, bro. All right. I don't get it. Well, thank you for that donkey today. Yes. Now, since we're talking life. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, Ebony K. Williams, you were uh, talking about uh, you freezing your eggs in that process. Yes. Single mm-hmm. motherhood journey. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I am uh, at the big age of 39. I'll mm-hmm. be the big 4-0 in September. Hey. Hey. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's it's that time. And it's interesting. I froze eggs at 34. Mm-hmm thinking that I would never use them. Mm -hmm. And that's very important. We were talking offline with Ms. Taylor over here. Mm -hmm. A lot of young ladies, and and I use young relatively loosely, uh, to me, if you're 28 to 36, go go ahead and try to stack your coins. It's not cheap. Mm -hmm. I want to be clear. You're talking about 15 racks. Easy. Maybe up to 20. 15 racks to freeze your eggs. Just just to freeze the eggs. And then there's monthly maintenance, correct? Yearly. Yeah, about, about about a thousand. Uh, I've been paying rent for children I don't have yet. Correct. Hey. Literally, a mm-hmm. yeah, thousand yeah, yeah. dollars a year just to mm-hmm. house the eggs, mm-hmm. which now have become embryos. Okay. What so. got you to this uh, this point though? Like you know, the pandemic a little bit. All right. Um, okay. Y'all know I came out of uh, an engagement. Da, 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 the, I, I absolutely. I was actually with my ex when I froze the eggs at thirty four, thinking a. I don't think I want no damn kids or B, if I do want them, obviously it will be with my partner. Correct. Uh, Once that ended, kept living life, this pandemic, y'all really had me look at legacy Mm -hmm. differently. Mm -hmm. Um, And like, I I feel I'm doing important work in the world. I feel God's blessing me to, 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 to make a, make a little, little something, make Mm -hmm. a couple dollars. Little change. Little, 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 little change. And who am I leaving it for? Like all this for what? Yeah, yeah, to yeah. what end? I mean, yeah. you guys are fathers. I, I assume for a reason. You've built beautiful mm-hmm. families. Mm-hmm. You have legacy to pass on. Mm-hmm. I wanted legacy. So you you said that uh, you, you got to pick the love juice of the man, so you can customize. It. <laughs> yeah. So, so let's t- tell us about this human. So let's talk about. <laughs> oh, the, my my specimen. Yeah, 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 yeah. How, yeah. How do you pick it? Is it a book or? It's a, it's like online dating. Is it's he a, a cow? It's, it's. So let's get to it. What is oh, very is difficult. What is very difficult, because y'all are dumb, <laughs> is uh, finding black sperm. Whoa. Really? Yeah. I'm, I, I, you know, I, a lot of people try to humble black men. I don't. Y'all should know. You yeah. have the stuff of gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Washington Post actually just did a whole feature piece about how hard it is for bl- black women, or this is a whole nother thing. There's a lot of non-black and white women who are on the quest to have these beautiful mixed kids. So they are intentionally buying black sperm. Mm-hmm. Black sperm is the hardest stuff to get on the market of sperm donation. Really? That sounds wild, doesn't it? No. Black it sperm is hard to get. But black sperm. And I'm going to tell you why black sperm is hard to get. Mm-hmm. Number one, these banks. Um, now, listen, you can go to the club, go to the bar, and, and, and just get some love juice. <laughs> get some black sperm. Get some, get some love juice for free. <laughs> mm-hmm. But if you want to go this kind of intentional, to your point, of, I love 48 hours of uh, 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 48 ruled, uh, laws of power. Laws of power. Mm-hmm. I'm a rules of power. Laws of power. Uh, I'm planning this, y'all, with specificity. So I wanted to go to the Cadillac dealership of sperm donation, California Cryo. There's only a few in the country. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I'll tell you about some of the details that went into my criteria when we come back. All All right. right. And what is the question so we can start uh, getting these calls? Uh, You know, I didn't realize that was the producer over there. I thought that was somebody over there waving at me. I'm here for you. No, no, that was Eddie. (laughs) That was Eddie. Oh, like to donate? (laughs) Yeah, you thought that was... Eddie, are you putting up your hand to donate? (laughs) Eddie's our producer. I'm just So what is the question? 800-585-1051. I just want to hear from more women that's on this journey. I want to know about are there women that are willing to consider single motherhood by choice and if so what age does that look like Correct. and if you do what kind of donor do you want all right let's talk about it it's the breakfast club good morning the breakfast club it's topic time call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with the breakfast club let's talk about it Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Our guest host, Ebony K. Williams, is here. So you were talking about this journey. Black of, sperm. Um, freezing your eggs and looking for, uh, I guess, a donor. Yes. And so, yeah. so, so, so tell us this person that you were looking for. So it was important for me to have Black Sperm Matters, mm-hmm. first of all. <laughs> black Sperm Matters. That's, okay. that's, that's, we got to start with that premise. Okay. Black, black, black Sperm, sperm matters. absolutely matters. Mm-hmm. And I wanted a black donor because I... 
am a black woman who feels confident enough. Uh, this is already scary. Let mm-hmm. me just start with that because I know a lot of people are probably thinking a lot of things like who would intentionally bring a child into the world with only one parent, especially mm-hmm. this world we live in. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I didn't think I had the, the the basic resources, y'all, to give this child love, support, fiscal education, and then build community. You know, because mm-hmm. black men and men in general will be an important part of this journey. But I'm going to try to outsource it. So I wanted a black sperm donor because I, I am a black woman. I know a lived black experience. I didn't want to run the risk of a non-black donor and then have a chi- have a Meghan Markle situation. Mm-hmm. Basically, mm-hmm. we're a kid that I can't relate to their experience. So I wanted him to be black. That already took me literally down to a, on a site of 300 active donors at a time. I was down to three. Wow. Mm-hmm. Just that Wow. Day. Yeah. And then you asked about height. Mm-hmm. I'm not really a heightist. I asked the height because he's oh. short. Yeah. You know, that was messy. In uh, just a little um, bit. <laughs> short, short people live longer. That's yeah. but um, And they say they make better husbands. That, that's a fact. That's that what they say. That's a fact. I, I don't know. That's, 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 that's what the I, data. I, I told you the research. Yeah. yeah. So anyways, I, d- I did want to go. They, I think they've got five feet to five, 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 six to six, one, and then like six, Two to six five. Anyways, I got the middle category. Five seven to six foot. Yeah, you want yeah. a six foot child. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm you know, telling you, I, I'm all for this. I got I got yeah. a couple of homegirls who are doing this. A couple of homegirls who have already frozen their eggs. You know, they, they've been open about it. Angela yes. Rye, you know, yeah. uh, Kendra G. But we, it, it kind of saddens me a little bit, only because I'm like, what are we doing as men that these great women are out here? And they got to do this. Well, I'm going to be candid with you. Okay. Um, again, anybody could go get get the club, club shot up. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. let's be clear. Mm-hmm. I'm really not. If if you're not the love of my life and also somebody that I trust to make business decisions with, mm. I'm really not trying to mm. co-parent with you. Mm. There's certain things, y'all, mm. at this point in my life at almost 40, I'm really not trying to negotiate with you about getting my child immunized. Mm-hmm. I'm, it's non-negotiable. I'm not playing with you when it comes to my kids' education. Mm-hmm. There's certain, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, if yeah. I'm, and I, I know that might not sit well with everybody. That's not so politically correct. But I think I'd rather go it alone. But, they were. But let me ask you a question. You know, the the thing that's that's kind of ill to me is, you know, because there's there's a, a lot of brothers that actually donate their sperm because a lot of them need the money, right? Yes. I ain't so, never heard that before in real life. I thought that was just a thing that no, people said. No, you get paid for it. You, you yeah. just don't give your sperm away for nothing. You get yeah. paid for it. And they recruit college kids for that reason. Because think about how broke you are in right. college. I didn't want to say this, but, you know, it's the breakfast club. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, colonoscopies the other day? Colonoscopy, yeah. Colonoscopy. Okay, well, I've actually had one. Mm-hmm. Ask me why. Why? Because I'm not a man and I'm certainly not 50. Well, well women get them as well. They do, but when they're not, not at 19. You were a I guinea pig? Mine, huh? you I was were... a guinea pig okay. in college. Wow. How much did you got paid? $300. Damn. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I know a guy that's gotten their ass played in for cheaper. Okay. No! <laughs> I felt rich at all, all college campus. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. So, okay. All right. You know, because I was just asking, because, you know, if, if a donor does give it, mm-hmm. give the sperm, I don't know if I want to meet my, meet, meet that, meet that sperm at, when I don't sperm know, is 18. Man. That's where I'm growing to be LeBron James. <laughs> That's something you know different. What I'm saying? That's something different. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was there for you when nobody else was. <laughs> <laughs> you are so stupid. I was there for you when nobody let's, else let's was. Let's go to the phone lines. A lot of women want to talk. <laughs> Hello, who's this? Hi, good morning. This is Amber. Hey, Amber, talk to us. Um, So I was just listening. First of all, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Amber. I worked for a agency in New York and in New Jersey. And I realized how many black women face this and I actually wanted to donate my eggs mm. and it wasn't because I never wanted children so if you win, I wanted you to donate my children. eggs and it wasn't until then that I realized I had my own fertility issues mm. oh, wow. and that started my process I was diagnosed with PCOS mm. um, a lot of women suffer from that and it causes fertility issues and it wasn't until then that I said hey okay, wait what about what I'm going to have for my future when that opportunity no longer became a choice, that's when I started to desire. Wow. And a lot of women go through that. They think they have all these choices over their body, especially reproduction. And sometimes you just don't. Okay. That's facts. Uh, I was talking to one of my homegirls. She's 37 and she's mad. She's angry. And she says, you know why? Because I go to the doctor. I do everything everyone told me to do. Why did nobody tell me that I'm born with all the eggs I'm ever going to have? Because a lot of people don't know that. Mm-hmm. You, y'all are di- y'all will produce sperm until the day you die. Correct. We as women are born with every single egg we will ever have. Mm-hmm. And all they do is deplenish in mm-hmm. quality and 
viability as we age. Mm-hmm. So why are we 38, 39 hearing for the first time? Oh, yeah, you should have froze eggs 10 years ago. Right. I love the intentionality of it, though. Yeah. Like, I love the fact that women are being intentional about, yo, I want to have kids. Yeah. I'm going to freeze my eggs and yeah. I'm going to find the right, you know, donor to do it. But it's very expensive and insurance yeah. doesn't cover it. Yeah. And, you know, I have a lot of, of friends as well that's doing the same. And, you know, it, you feel bad because you want them to do it early. So that way they have the pick of the litter, as they say, you know, the, the most. Yeah. Yes. Yes. No, he's I got right. you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's I, yeah, it's a cringe, but yes, yes it's, it's, it's a big <laughs> cringe, I believe that black sperm is scarce. Very scarce. I'm gonna tell you how scarce Nick it Cannon is. Nick Cannon got plenty. Let me. You know what's funny? When I did Nick's show, which shout out to mm-hmm. you, Charlamagne, because he's aware of me uh, through you. Mm-hmm. He said he he was honest. He said I, you're so amazing, and he said, but I, ain't I, ain't um, Damn. but I, and I don't know any dudes that are not. That's, how I'm That's what he said. That's what he said. Whenever my homegirls ask me about dude, I'm like, I'm not getting involved in that. I'm That's not introducing you to nobody. That's what he said. Because I don't know anybody that's ready. I, I, for me personally, I need brothers to be doing the work on themselves in a real way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If, if I know brothers are doing the work and, you know, they really ready to settle down sure. and be come come to you as a more healed version of themselves, cool. Other than that, I don't get involved. Well, let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. Want to talk to some more women so out there that's, that's going through the process right now. Now, let me ask you a question. If Nick was actually doing it for a lot of these women that weren't able to have babies, is it bad? We already seen she's got to have it, sir. Bro. We don't need we don't need a she's got to have it part two. All right, it's the All Breakfast right. Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We have Ebony K. Williams here. Now we were talking about her process of having a child, freezing the eggs, and picking the uh, right sperm donor, mm-hmm. and all that. Um, yeah. So let me ask: Would you pick a mixed black man, or do you want fully black, like you? I'm not. I'm not. He's Dominican. I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. I'm actually like, fully black. I'm glad you acknowledge he's Dominican. No, I'm fully black. But I'm, I'm saying because you said you want a black man, but I'm sure there's a bunch of mix. Maybe a, a you know. Not a bunch. Not, not even a really? bunch. Just, man, y'all think I'm playing. Anybody that even physically presents as black, brown, mm. is very difficult. Mm. So to me, my threshold was you need to appear black. You appear black. And I, I, I got somebody who is black. Do you think that, before we go to the phone, do you think it's a lot of men, black men, aren't donating their sperm because, number one, they may not know about it, or number two, a lot of black men got conspiracy theories. They don't even like to do DNA tests because they feel too. like they're being cloned and all kinds of I stuff. I think it's three reasons. Black men have conspiracy theories for, I think, fair reasons. Mm-hmm. Number two, there's so much nasty stigma around black men even being fathers yeah, you know there's yeah. so much narrative mm-hmm. around black men having too many kids they don't take care of or mm-hmm. this that and the third mm-hmm. so who wants to add to that also these banks these elite sperm banks that women with the means like myself use they recruit on like Ivy League college campuses they're not going to Morehouse they're not going to Howard they're not going to mm-hmm. Hampton they're going to MIT they're going to Stanford oh. and they're going to Harvard where you don't have the plethora of black men that we need Let's go to the phone lines. Hello, who's this? Hi, this is Jerrica. Hey, good morning. Tell us your story. What's up, Mama? I don't feel like it's a good idea for black men to donate to the um, sperm bank. What we what they have is royal gold, and it should be kept to themselves. It don't need to be for these other races to come and try to have these Sophie babies and use our beauty. Our beauty comes with oppression, trials, and tribulations. No. But sis, what about us black women that want the pure gold? Well, well, we need to have you the platform and get us our own firm bank. Oh, okay. Where I'm, I'm with the you. The entrance is like you to enter into like Harvard or something. You have to know the history. You, you have to, to know struggle. You I'm want us you. to bank black is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. bank black. Then you, and, can, and you have to know how to do your kids here. You know, they don't even know how to do that shit too. Well, that's They're true. what? They're kids. She's talking about white moms or non-black women who have these mixed race little swirly kids yeah. and they be walking around looking like Angela, Angelina Jolie's daughter when Got she was you. first born. Got Yo, you. I, th- I think that's... That, they that don't know how to do hair is what you're saying. They, that's what she was saying. Oh, As an okay. entrepreneur, that might be an HBCU Actually, sperm bank. That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, bank black. Bank no, black. for real. Yeah. For real, get all the sperms, and you get your, you, you could get you could get like Q's and and Kappas and mm-hmm. Alphas high. and yeah. GPA GPA is very GPA important. GPA is important. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah, to yeah. pick GPA. I got you to pick. You can pick GPA. I wanted a wow. hard science major because that's not really my ministry. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's good. You could advertise for all you brothers out there who want to be a positive deadbeat daddy. This is your stop, opportunity. Stop, <laughs> stop it. Hello, who is this? Commercial. I got five kids, but they don't want me to take care of them. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hey, what's your name, Mama? Hmm. Hi, my name is Rena. Hey, Rena, talk to us. 
knowing what I know now, I have a child, like, he's eight, and I've been doing parent stuff by myself for eight years. So I feel like if I had the funds back then, and like if I know what I know now, I would take the route of getting a, uh, going through the process of having a child without the parent. Yep. I feel I say that to alleviate the pain and the like the back history of having to explain to your child why the parent isn't there. That part. Um. Also, having to deal with the financial burden of taking a care of the child by yourself. Everybody gonna end up by with a being a single parent, being a sole provider for your child. Anyway, you yeah. know. No, I appreciate that. And actually, I want to say something about that. The data says because some of my married uh, women friends have been a little judgy, mm-hmm. to be candid, and mm-hmm. that's I kind of understand. Um, you know, the data says that it's not the two parent household that makes a difference; it's the change in household. Mm-hmm. So, if you were born and raised to a single parent, you you tend mm-hmm. to condition pretty normal. It's when your parents were together and then divorce. Yeah. That's where they see the trauma. That's where they see the dropping of grades. That's where they see the behavioral issues. Yeah, that's, I was, I was going to say that too. Yeah. I think this situation would be different because like there's no there's no trauma involved. Like you know, I, I, I read your book Bet on Black, and you talk about you know the, the trauma of not having your father. But Absolutely. in this situation. It's different. You, no, there's choice. Yeah, you you were not <clears throat> you were not abandoned. That's right. You're not forgotten about. You're not being denied. That's right. You you had a mother that had a couple of dollars and wanted you so so badly. That's right. That I shot myself in the butt. I shot myself in the stomach. Mm-hmm. I spent all my you know savings at the time just to create you and bring you into this world. Right up. Yeah. yeah. Like how much do I love you? Yeah. You know. All right. Well, you better act right too. Is there a, a, a moral of the story? To me, I mean, just me personally, the moral of the story, boy, it's really hard out here for black women. It is. Yeah, like, Lord have that. mercy. This, this is why black love is revolutionary. You know what I'm saying? A black man and a black woman having kids, growing a family, is re- it's a revolutionary act. And this is why I encourage black men to be with black women because of this reason. Word to Dr. Umar. <laughs> Word to Dr. Umar. <laughs> Please Umar. not make the moral of... This story, Dr. Umar. But that's the one thing, Dr. Umar, I mean, he's right about that. That's the one thing I can agree with him on wholeheartedly. Black men need to be with black women. I'm not disagreeing with that. Yeah. I'm just not going to give that much credit to Dr. <laughs> Dr. Umar. We're not, we not ending my personal, deeply personal narrative <laughs> with shout out to Dr. Umar. We're not doing that. So what if Dr. Umar sperm... Good night. <laughs> Good night. What's it? Rumor report? What's right. next? We got rumor report. We got up another donkey of the day. We're going to talk about. This one going to Charlemagne. Divorces when we come back. It's the, the breakfast hell club. Out of the here. Rumor has it. Rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty patty. I'm gossiping. This is the rumor report. I mean, I guess we on the breakfast club. This is where the tea spills, right? Yes. Right. On the breakfast club. All right, talking all that baby talk, we got to talk some divorces now. All right, now we got to start with Neo. Neo, uh, his divorce with his wife, Crystal, is finalized. Now, uh, people are asking, you know, what is he getting? What is she getting? Well, uh, his wife, his ex-wife, will get a $1.6 million lump sum. That's to balance out their real estate holdings. Uh, she will also get 20000 in moving expenses, uh, $150,000 check to his ex so she can buy a new car because he's taking the old one, which is a Bentley oh, truck. Yeah. Uh, he what does will, he get? <laughs> he gets a Bentley truck. He gets the Bentley truck. Okay. Gets a Bentley truck. Uh, she also he ha- also has to pay twelve thousand dollars a month in child support. Uh, and After the one point six lump sum, yes, and five thousand dollars a month in alimony for the next three years. The one point six char is a, a real estate. It's for real out. estate. Yeah. So. Oh, got you, got you, got you, got you. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So that's that. DJ Mustard and his uh, his wife uh, reach a, a temporary deal. Now she was seeking eighty two thousand dollars. But uh, it looks like the the court approved thirty five thousand dollars a month in spousal support. So she'll get thirty five thousand dollars a month. She'll live nice, and they have three children. She'll live nice. She'll definitely live nice. I, is, it, is it because uh, it's always because of the lifestyle that they used to live, right? That's why mm-hmm. they get awarded these big lump sums, right? Grown accustomed, Charlemagne. Yeah, grown accustomed. Grown to. accustomed. To. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but in, most, I know somebody in some who cases, has... it's, it's, it's right. Like you don't want to yeah. take your kids from living luxury, and then all of a oh, sudden absolutely. they got to live here, and you your dad is still living in this mansion, and mm-hmm. I'm not. You know, it's going to affect their kids. Yeah, I know a rich human who had to buy uh, his his ex wife. The same type of house they live in in yeah. the same neighborhood. Ooh. Oh, he's filthy. Oh no, he got it. 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 Got it. Yeah. He got it. Got it. He got it. Got it. I mean, I'm not mad at any of that. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, you know, God forbid if anything like that ever happened to me and my wife, she hey, take take half. Like, we've been together 25 years. Yeah, like, they all say at, that. Uh, nah, get that prenup, sis. Nah, but at the end of the day, you want your, <laughs> you want your kids to live the way that they live now. You know, you want you. 
You, you, the, your wife raises your kids. Yeah, you I don't know, know how long so, they've been together. The, the mustards and the neos. And I think them, mustard but, was with his uh, wife before they before he even started. I know neo. I think was they had three kids. So it was, the issue with something. what you just said, though, envy theoretically that makes sense, right? Like, of course, why would a good parent of either gender not want their kid? Spite shows up. So it's not that I want my kid true. to live a messed up lifestyle. It's f that. Yeah, I guess it depends. That's how, how, that's yeah. how that shows up. I guess it Correct. depends how y'all break up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like but still, you want your, if y'all yeah. just grow apart, that's different. That's but, but you still want your, the mother, of your child, to be okay taking care of the kids. You know, unless she take cheated it to the on you. Activities. Exactly. Unless she cheated on you. Exactly. Yeah. Even if she, even if she cheated on you, though, you want to, you, your kids to be good. The kids will be fine. The I ain't got nothing to do with her. Oh, you're right. That's what they'll say. But you want your kids good. Yeah. yeah. Right. Now, uh, it's oh, a good, what? Ebony had a word for people that uh, when you've been with somebody for a long time, like if you started with them. Oh, what did, I don't remember. You said we said it today. Angel, she called him an oh, angel, angel investor. investor. Angel investor. Yeah, that's your, um, oh, Mustard's ex-wife was an angel investor. Yeah. What is yeah. that? That's you invested with you from the beginning. From like, the very beginning, when it was just a dream. Jeff Bezos' wife was an angel investor. Absolutely. Yeah. Mackenzie yeah. should get every dime that she got. <laughs> I got a whole fight about that one time in Madison Square Garden. It was terrible. Really? With, so, with uh, someone I was dating at the time. Oh, we just started arguing about that. Yes. Really? He was like, "That must be some great poom poom." I was like, "Play a what?" Nah, it ain't got nothing to do with the poom poom. That got to do with the fact she that was, had to do she, with she, the she, she, she was shooting she in the gym. Amazon yeah, with right. him in the garage. That's right. yeah, Stop that's playing. Right. Yeah. That's right. All right, and lastly, we got to uh, congratulate Missy Elliott and Tribe Called Quest. They're among the 2023 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominees for this year's induction. So Yay. they revealed the list of uh, Missy Elliott, Tribe Called Quest, uh, Cheryl Crow, uh, Cindy Lapa, George Michael, Willie Nelson, Rage Against the Machine, The Spinners, The White Stripes, and some other people I don't know. I say this all the time, every time this happens every year. They got to get rid of the rock and roll. Just call it the Music Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. Like, drop the rock and roll. Because whenever I hear that, I don't be feeling happy for the Missy Elliott's and the uh, Tribe Called Quest. Because they've yes. been icons. They've Correct. been great. Yep. I agree with like, that. Like, drop on the clues bombs for them. But still, change it to just the Music Hall of Fame. I like that. Why has got to be one genre of music? I, and I wonder why they wait so long. Like a group like Tribe Called Quest, right? Mm. Like, yeah. all the members are not there. Yeah, one, you know, one member passed away. So Fife Dog passed away, so you, you would love to, you would love to, you know, see him get his flowers. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, when he can still smell them. That's right. So I wonder why they take so long to do it because they no deserved idea. it a long time ago. Twice as hard for half as much. Mm. That's your saying. That's it. But mm -hmm. now we're coming for what? Everything. Everything. That's right. All right. Well, that is your rumor report. The People's Choice mix is up next. Get your request in now. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. In the new Peacock original Poker Face, Natasha Lyonne stars as Charlie Kale, an ordinary Joe with extraordinary ability to tell when someone is lying. Stream the 10-part Mystery of the Week series from Knives Outrider director Ryan Johnson now with new episodes every Thursday only on Peacock. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Our guest host, Ebony K. Williams, is here. Hey. It's Black History Month. What we doing? Hey, man. It's Black History Month. And you know, during Black History Month, uh, the Black Effect Podcast Network with iHeartRadio, uh, we put out a podcast every day called I Didn't Know, Maybe You Didn't Need, hosted by my guy, B-Dot, man. And B-Dot gives you these... Uh, Black history facts that you may or may not have known. And today, the good brother B Dot is going to be discussing literacy. Let's listen. I didn't know, maybe you didn't. I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know. I didn't know. So, Dig, after the Civil War, a lot of states enacted literacy tests as a voting requirement. Now, the purpose, of course, was to exclude people with minimal literacy, in particular, poor African Americans in the South. After a simple Google search, I came upon a sample voter registration application featuring a literacy test that was used by W.C. Patton, who was the head of the NAACP voter registration program, and he would use this sample to educate African American voters before they went to register to vote. Now first, let me read the directions. This test is to be given to anyone who cannot prove a fifth grade education. Do what you are told to do in each statement, nothing more, nothing less. Be careful, as one wrong answer denotes failure of the test. You have 10 minutes to complete the 20-question test. Moral of the story is this was super insulting. And thank God for the Federal Voting Rights Act of 1965, because if we hadn't had it, we'd still be taking these literacy tests just to get our ass beat in line attempting to vote. Listen. If I've piqued your interest enough to want to know what some of those ridiculous questions were on the test, you can listen to this full episode on the Black Effect Podcast Network. 
but be prepared to be irate because I didn't know. Maybe you didn't either. I didn't know. That's right. I bet you didn't know that. And if you did, you read a lot. OK, but make sure you subscribe to uh, I Didn't Know. Maybe you didn't either on the Black Effect Podcast Network available everywhere you listen to podcasts. Salute to my guy, B. Dot. All right. When we come back, we got the positive notice to Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. Ebony K. Williams, we appreciate you for joining us these last two days. So much fun. More yeah. fun than I could have imagined. And we know you're busy. You had to do the view yesterday. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've been promoting your book, uh, Bet on Black, which is out right now. Great read. If you haven't got it yet, go get it. Read it. Thank you, baby. You know, I'm like, too I, I, busy I, for y'all. Huh? Never too busy for y'all. You know, this is one of my that. favorite places to be in the world. My safe uh -huh. haven. And, and, you. and you yeah. know it. You know that's true because she said it in the book. It's yeah. in writing for life. <laughs> Those words will outlive me. Really? I'm going to read the book this week and this week and I got to travel. So yeah. I'm on the plane. I'm going to read it. Real, yeah. real quick though. Why do you think it's so important to uh, send in your blackness at? For the example you just gave, when you mm -hmm. talked about uh, renaming the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame to the Music Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. it's called Rock and Roll. Why? They're centering whiteness. Mm -hmm. That's the whole reason. Mm -hmm. So when we shift that paradigm, right, when we reframe our thinking and we say we get to center our experiences without apology, it gives us a sense of excite. It's exciting to be black. I wake up excited every day to be a black woman Word. in America. And that's why. It's funny, though, because you can see it when you show up on shows like yesterday on The View, like. <laughs> You can see that you can't wait to show up in your full blackness. That's it. And when they asked you about Ron DeSantis and what he's doing with African American curriculum, Ebony was like, "What camera? What camera?" Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. We didn't get a chance to play. Let's let's play the audio. Now. Let's hear it. Governor DeSantis, hi there. Ebony K. Williams here. <laughs> I take great exception to your characterization that a degree in black studies is something other than academic. I actually hold a degree in black studies mm. from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. I also hold a law degree, an honorary doctorate. How much time do we have? Mm -hmm. um, and I assure you I am wholly qualified and academically elite. So I would encourage you to revisit your thinking on that one. There you go. And, and it's, it's refreshing because I know that they don't get that on daytime television. Correct. No. They don't get that straight talk like that. But you know what it is? And I talk about this truthfully in the book, Bet on Black. I wasn't always at this place. Mm -hmm. It was an evolution for me. I have to be honest about that. Mm -hmm. I don't want people to think mm -hmm. that I just popped out the womb. It took me a long, almost 40 years to get to a place where I've divorced myself from white comfort. We talked mm -hmm. about that a year mm -hmm. ago. Um, and I'm really excited and proud to enter and center blackness in every space. Mm -hmm. So. All right. That's right. Go get Bet on Black by Ebony K. Williams. Available everywhere you buy books right now. All right. Love y'all. Leave us on a positive note. Uh, the positive note is this, man. It's a quote from Dr. Wayne W. Dyer. Uh, with everything that has happened to you, you can either feel sorry for yourself or treat what has happened as a gift, okay? Everything is either an opportunity to grow or an obstacle to keep you from growing. You get to choose. That's the beauty of life, people. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?